The Life of John Baptist de La Salle. The Life of John Baptist de La Salle, written in 1734, should have been about a man from a prominent Reims family whose social background and wealth led him to high honours in the French church of the 17th century. After all, someone who has made a canon of the Reims Cathedral before his 16th birthday, a student at Saint-Sulpice and a doctor of theology at 30, was surely going to be prominent. Yet we know that through meeting a devoted school teacher of the poor, de La Salle the man became a saint who devoted his life to the education of poor boys in Reims, Paris, Rouen, Grenoble and many other places throughout his native France. Because poor parents could not pay teachers, their children had little prospect of any schooling and social improvement. As de La Salle came to realise this, he was challenged about his life, his personal wealth and security, so that eventually he gave up his family home to move in with the first teachers he was training, resigned his canonry and the money that went with it, and in the severe winter of 1683-1684, with his own hands, he gave away his personal wealth in providing food for the poor in Reims. The artist depicting how de La Salle followed the gospel literally in giving away his wealth to the poor has chosen not to show us the angry reality of starving people struggling to get food, but rather the way in which this extraordinary event conferred human dignity on all who took part in it, those who gave, those who received. This gospel-inspired event became the foundation stone of the very first teaching brotherhood in the Catholic Church. In 1694, we find him with schools in Paris and avowing with 12 of his brothers to associate himself with them for the rest of his life for the Christian education of poor boys. By this action, he becomes the founder of the brothers. From now on, his personal journey is linked with the brothers who will call him father and founder. But opposition came from all kinds of people. His own archbishop rebuked him for living with a group of laymen so far below the social status into which he had been born. People opposed him for teaching children to read in their native French rather than in Latin, as had been the custom. Teachers' groups in Paris saw themselves threatened by his gratuitous schools open to all, even when some of the families could have paid. Twice his Paris schools were invaded and ransacked, and de La Salle himself had to face legal tribunals in which he was condemned for what he and his brothers were doing. This new brotherhood needed its own justification, so we find de La Salle writing the books needed to train his brothers, pedagogical books, religious books, practical manuals to help children learn their own native language, books of meditations to inspire, encourage and support those who would become educators of the young. We see him depicted here in his sixties, teaching at Grenoble, aging and suffering illnesses, still inspired by the mystery of the cross, steadfast as he undoubtedly remembered events he had written in 1694 in his memoir of the beginnings. God, who is so good and who does not force our inclinations, wishing to engage me in the work of the schools, did so in an imperceptible way and over a long period of time, so that one commitment led to another which I had never foreseen at the beginning. At times he must have reflected how he had walked with his first group of brothers on pilgrimage through the night from Reims to the shrine of Our Lady of Liesse to place their brotherhood under Mary's patronage. How often he must have been embarrassed to remember that these men who in his own words he had first considered lower than his own personal servant, were now his brothers, associated with him to continue the work he had been led to begin. He knew each of them by name. They had become his new family, and he exchanged letters with each one every month. We see him remembering the innovative classroom he and his brothers created in Paris, how well it had succeeded in the eyes of all those involved in it 
with its long benches and the pupils seated in rank according to the lesson they were following. Here there was order, system and method provided by the teachers, his brothers whom he had so carefully trained. Death came when he was 68 years of age, but he was able to tell his followers how God had led and guided him at every step of the way for nearly 40 years. His legacy was there with his 100 brothers. It was there for later generations, for us, in his innovative writings, the conduct of schools, his meditations, his best-selling politeness book, The Brother's Rule of Life. For he proved himself through his writings to be a founder of a movement, something that has outlived him to the present and continues to show itself resilient and open to change just as he and his brothers were in the very beginning. We continue to meet him today, over 300 years later, in many different places he could never have imagined. In a classroom in Africa, in an advanced technical school for the poor in France, in the reminiscences of a brother who has served in his native United States, in the Philippines, in Bethlehem University and in Kenya, in the dedicated lives of all those today who are being older brothers and sisters to young people in need in refugee Vietnamese brothers instructing the children of refugees in California, in the work of many thousands of lay partners involved in the Lasallian mission of human and Christian education in India, and in more than 80 countries today outside of his native France. In 1900, John Baptist de La Salle was declared a saint. In 1950, he was declared patron saint of all those who work in the field of education. The man who looked with pity on the plight of the poor in 1680 continues to inspire thousands of educators who work, associated together in the Lasallian mission of human and Christian education for the educational service of the poor in today's world.